Hi, I'm Kevin Kundert with the Rural Community Assistance Partnership. Today we'll be looking into a well restoration. My name is Bob Rick. I'm with Great Lakes Community Action Partnership. South Wilmington called GLCAP in uh, to help them with some water loss issues. We started working with the water loss and doing water audits and rate analysis and um, that, that uh, we're still working with them to try to identify where some of their lost uh, revenue is at with the water loss. South Wilmington had some bacteriological problems in one of their wells. They kept flushing and, and they tried to put a uh, disinfectant in there and tried to flush it out, but it, it never materialized as they wished it would. So they brought in water well solutions to try to identify what the, what the problem is. They pulled the well and the pump. They did a videotaping and they discovered that there was a, a lot of tuberculation on the well casing and they've identified the source as the pitless adapter was leaking, bringing in water from outside, causing the corrosion, tuberculation, and uh, with that tuberculation, that harbors bacteria. My name is Michael Naylor, a Director of Field Operations for Water Well Solutions, Illinois Division. This particular well in question here was treated with a 7 pH chlorinated 200 ppm solution with a biodispersant adder and it took care of the bacterial problem for a short time. Uh, they're getting hits of coliform which is very unusual for a well of this depth. Typically that can be caused by holes in the casing, uh, letting groundwater infiltration in, dirty materials, substandard products being introduced into the well. Uh, the idea here is going to be pull the pump, get a television survey done, identify any structural issues, and then fall back on our chemical treatment, which consists of 12% sodium hypochlorite with a pH buffer to bring that pH right to seven, and then a small amount of a biodispersant. Uh, that is typically our batch. We typically overcome the well bore quantity of water with the treatment, so we're sure that we have exchanged all the water in the well bore with the treatment uh, product. Well, we're trying to identify what the particular rehabilitation method is going to be to treat the well for the bacteria that they're having problems with. Part of the whole operation would be to pull the pump, try to identify any bacteria that might be present on the uh, casing or column pipe, look for holes in the column pipe that might be aerating the water, causing the bacteria to proliferate. And then uh, what we're gonna do tomorrow is we're gonna run a camera down and try to identify any slime that might be harboring bacteria, see if there's any holes in the casing, see if there's any kind of uh, structural integrity problems we can find or maybe where the bacteria issue is being harbored. It could be aerobic, anaerobic, it could be at the bottom of the well, it could be throughout the entire well. So what we're doing is we're doing a downhole survey of the well. We're looking at the well casing, uh, looking for different bacteria, different colors of bacteria. We're looking for the condition of the casing, making sure there's no holes, any kind of flaking. So if there's a lot of flaking, we can come in with a, a Cody brush or a steel brush and knock it all, knock the uh, rust and the flaking off. And if it's really bad, we'll do a second survey to make sure that there's no holes in, in the casing. This casing, the, the flaking is not really bad. We're looking more at, there's a lot of uh, barnacles which have look, look like bacteria involved with it so that's where the chemical and the brushing is going to come into, into play. Sometimes it's easier to do mechanical first and try to remove all that bacteria, the uh, silt sedimentation and then follow it through with a chemical application because a lot of times if you treat it mechanically first and then go follow up with a, a chemistry you don't need as much chemistry to be effective in the in the borehole. So it's all about trying to work within the client's budget, but also be very effective in what you're doing. So to maximize the treatment. There's air bursts where we go down and actually physically burst or blast the well with air, compressed air to try to move and slough off uh, different things. Um, if it's a hole in the casing, we have a swedging technology where we actually compress in a new liner uh, instead of running a, you know, a 
500, 600 foot liner, we can actually target 10 foot zones, five foot zones, and try to seal that off with a neoprene backing so you're not getting contaminants into the borehole. Um, there's a double disc surge block we were talking about where you run a disc up and down and then it, it displaces the water in the well and mixes and agitates the chemistry and pushes it out in the formation. There's jetting, there's, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a prefla of different things that we could use. But again, based on the television survey and the problems that the client are having, that's what's really gonna dictate the treatment of the well. They've identified the source as the pitless adapter was leaking, bringing in water from outside, causing the corrosion, tuberculation. With that tuberculation, that harbors bacteria. Uh, so they're going to clean off the tuberculation, uh, disinfect, and install a new pitless adapter, and it's uh, in route to the, the job site. That well is an asset to the community, which they have to maintain because the EPA won't allow them to use that well unless that bacteria is, is gone. Yes, they have to invest money into that uh, well to bring it up um, to EPA standards. For more information on RCAP training materials, go to rcap.org.